Hello everyone, welcome to Saturday Morning Yoga with me, Jamie. It's great to see you here. Time to gather everyone together and enjoy some wonderful family yoga time. We are off to the woods today to meet a creature of the night. But it's a very cute little fluffy creature. Oh, she's gorgeous. Now she's got a rather big test coming up. A big test for one so young. And we're going to go and help her get ready for that test. And we are going to learn something along the way. You are wiser than you think. everyone, welcome to Cosmic Kids. I'm Jamie and this is your place for yoga, stories and fun. It's easy, just copy the moves I do and enjoy the adventure. Now we always begin by sitting on our bottoms and crossing our legs and bringing our hands together at our hearts and saying our secret yoga code word, which is Namaste. Ready? After three. One, two, three. Namaste. There, now we're ready to begin. So let's have a look who our adventure is about today. Let's pop on our cosmonoculars, drawing our thumbs and fingers together. Have a look through. <gasps> wow, look at that. It's so pretty spinning around and around. All the colours, oh, lovely. Oh, can you see it? Yes, it's an owlet, a baby owl. It's Tallulah the owlet. What's Tallulah doing? She's doing yoga. She's doing magic carpet pose. This is so exciting. We're off to see Tallulah the owlet. How cute. Now, we all know about owls, don't we? They're supposed to be wise. Well, Poor little Tallulah, I think she's been having a bit of a problem with this recently because she doesn't really know what wise means. Hmm. And maybe we could do with help on that one too. So this is going to be a very helpful adventure. So today we're going to be camping, camping out at night. So let's pack a backpack. We take our legs out long and we reach forward to our toes, bending our knees a little bit. We open the backpack, lifting our arms. Ooh. Taking our arms out wide, we twist one way and we get ourselves a tent. We need a tent to camp in. Tent, 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 tent. Arms out wide again, we twist the other way. And we get a torch so that we can see in the dark. Here we go. Boom. Lovely. Pop it in. There we go. Arms out wide, twist the other way. Now, ooh. Let's get a sleeping bag so we're nice and snug tonight. Here we go. Sleeping bag, sleeping bag, sleeping bag, sleeping bag. Arms out wide, twist the other way. Let's get a little camping stove in case we need some breakfast in the morning or for some hot chocolate later. Get your camping stove and pop it in. Mm. Arms up high, bending our knees. Let's close the backpack. Mm. Done. Now, let's get ready to be little owls. Crossing our legs, we need to get our necks ready. So we look over one shoulder and over the other. Now, owls have seven more bones in their necks than we do, so they can look round a lot further than we can. Let's try it again. Over one shoulder and over the other. Now let's fluff up our feathers by rolling our shoulders around and around. Lift them up and put them down. Lift up one, lift up two, put down one, put down two. Going up, up, a down, down, up, up, a down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Very good, everyone. Now for those eyes, big owl eyes. Let's Let's do our cosminocular fingers. Have a look through. Gosh, your eyes are enormous. Lovely, just like owls. We make them strong by putting a finger on our chin and putting our thumb in front of us. Now keep your head still and follow your thumb as you move it with your eyes, lifting it up and down. Only moving your eyes to the side and the other side. And now going all the way around. Very good. Now, 
we need to get our eyes ready for seeing in the dark. So we bring our hands together and we rub them really fast, making them go super duper hot. Hot, 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 hot. And when they're super hot, we place them over our eyes like cups, allowing our eyes to rest in that warm darkness. And when we lower our hands, ah, our eyes feel amazing. It's time to go. So we come up onto two knees, stretch our arms wide and give everyone at home a great big hug. Oh, we step outside and we head out into the woods, marching out into the forest where we're going to be setting up our camp tonight. It's still daylight, so Tallulah is still asleep. This gives us time to set up our tent. Here we are. Let's put it up. We put out one pole. Take your leg out to the side and two poles. Take your leg out to the other side and three poles, lifting your arm up to the sky and four poles. Now let's check that the zipper works. Let's see if it goes all the way down. Ready? Zip. Oh, it does. Now, does it go up, I wonder? Let's try. Zip. Mm. Let's go down again. Zzzz. Maybe it'll go up this time. Here we go. Oh. oh dear. Phew, that's a relief. We didn't want that zipper to be broken. Now we set up a campfire. Sitting on our bottoms, crossing our legs and setting up some logs. We fold forwards as the flames start to crackle, making us feel all lovely and warm. Oh, the sky is starting to change colour. So we lie down on our backs to watch. Lying down, wow, look at the sky. It's turning from orange to lilac to purple and blue. It's dusk. It's so pretty. Look up there. We can see the moon. We stand up. We reach up to the moon and we say, hello, moon. But look, it's just a little crescent moon. Drawing your feet together, bring your hands together and lean all the way over like a crescent moon or a banana and come back to the centre again and over the other way. Whoop. Wow! The moon is surrounded by lots of beautiful sparkly stars. Come up tall, jump your feet wide, arms wide, making a star shape. Look how sparkly your star is. It's amazing. Goodness, what's that sound? Come down to your knees, everyone, and rub your ears. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's the sound of the owls. They're waking up. It's the sound of the night. Can we be still and calm as we let the sounds of the night come alive? We look up and up through the trees, through the branches, we can see Tallulah, the owlet. Coming up, up onto your toes, perch back. She holds her little wings to the side, looking over the edge, her little talons wiggling. She's a bit wobbly up there, but look, she looks down at us and she spots us. Uh-oh, she decides to dive down. Lifting your bottom up to the sky, she's falling. She might crash in a moment. But she takes her wings, crossing her elbows, protecting her little beak. She huddles down into a little ball, huddle yourself up, and then lands with a bump on her tail feathers, rocking and rolling backwards and forwards. Rock and roll! Oh dear, she's got lots of leaves in her beak, so she does a big <laughs> to get it clear. Oh dear, I'm all in a flap and a fidget because I've got to do my wisdom test at school, at owl school, and I'm not really sure what wisdom means. Oh dear, Tallulah. Well, being in a flap and a fidget can't be helping. 
maybe we can help you calm down and feel centred by doing some special owl breaths. Coming to our knees, we show Tallulah how to do it. Bring your hands down in between your knees. Breathe in and lift up your wings. Breathe out and lower them down. And again. Oh, that's better. Now Tallulah feels so much calmer. She feels ready for anything. We can help her learn how to be wise. So we set off and head to the magic wishing tree. Standing up, bring one foot on top of the other and your hands together at your heart. Now grow your wishing tree branches tall. Now, because we're at the wishing tree, I think we can make a wish. Can you whisper your wish to me now? Go on. Oh, I love your wish. It's brilliant. Let's swap sides. Bringing your hands down. Take your foot and put it on the other foot now. Hands together at your heart. Grow your wishing tree branches tall. And this time, let's make a little special wish just for Tallulah. We wish that she finds her way to wisdom. Yes. Now it's time to go. On with our journey. <gasps> Jump your feet wide. We come to a ginormous spider's web. <gasps> Ooh, and sat in the middle is a rather large spider. Bring your feet in a little bit closer. Bend your knees, wiggle your fingers. Take them inside your feet and then take them round the back and round the sides to sit down. Psst. Psst. Uh, excuse me, I'd like to talk to you. The spider wants to talk to us. We'd better go and listen. I was hearing that you might need to learn how to be wise. Is that true? Well, I had a student just like you once, name of Peter Parker. Yes, that's right. Became the superhero Spider-Man. Well, I taught him everything he knows. I taught him how to activate his spider senses. Would you like to know? We sit down on our bottoms and cross our legs. Would we like to know how to activate our spider senses? Yes, we would. We sit, our eyes are wide, we are ready to learn, and so is Tallulah. The spider brings the tips of its feet together, sitting poised. When you hear the sound of the gong, you will hear it chime and hear it ring. When you can no longer hear the ring, you must lower your hands into your lap. Are you ready to take the test and hear the gong? We're ready. We place our hands out to the side in preparation for hearing the gong. Wow, that was cool. We couldn't hear it anymore and so we lowered our hands into our laps. Should we try it again? Let's try it one more time and try it this time with our eyes closed. We take our hands out to the side, close our eyes and wait for the sound of the gong. When we can't hear any more of the gong's chime, we lower our hands into our laps. Here we go. was amazing. We did some really good activated listening then. The spider tells us. Now you see, that is the spider's lesson. Remember, the less you speak, the more you'll hear. That is my lesson to you, O Tallulah, and to you too, Cosmic Kids. This is a really good lesson. And now that we've activated our hearing, we can hear the sound of a monkey jumping. Coming up onto our toes after three, big monkey jump. One, two, three. Ah, ah, ah. This is our monkey friend, Mike, the cosmic space monkey. All right there. Now I've got a little bit of advice. Can you look? I mean, Really, really look and see what's going on in the world around you. Even better, can you imagine the world from someone else's point of view? Let's try it now. Look, over there, rustling in the leaves. What do you see? Sure enough, we see 
what Mike's pointing to. A tiny little mouse who's rustling around in the leaves. Now, can we imagine what this little mouse is thinking? Oh, I'm just looking for some berries and some nuts and some seeds. Oh, oh look, I found some. Oh, this is great. Oh, I can feed my babies tonight. This is wonderful. Sitting up, Tallulah spots a beetle rolling around on his back. Lying on your backs, holding onto your legs, and have a little roll. Ooh. He looks like he's having a really good scratch on his back. Ooh. We imagine what he must be thinking. Oh, yeah, that's the ticket. That's the spot. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh, yes, I like giving it a good yep. Yeah. Oh, great. Wow. We look back at Mike, our friend, sitting up. He is squatting still. So, you see, my friend, if you can see stuff and feel stuff from someone else's point of view, that is called compassion. And that, my friend, is a quality of the wise. And with that nugget of wisdom, he leaps off into the night. One, two, three. <laughs> this is great. We're learning so much about wisdom. What was that noise? Standing tall. <laughs> it's the school bell for Owl School. It's time for Tallulah's wisdom test. Oh, let's hope she's ready. There's just enough time to phone a friend. Sitting on your bottoms, legs out long. Take hold of your telephone. Dial the number. Hello? <gasps> on the other end of the phone is our friend, Popcorn the Dolphin. Coming up onto your knees, crisscross your fingers, come down onto your elbows. Our Tallulah is on the phone to Popcorn the Dolphin, taking hold of your other phone now, holding it to your ear. So, what do you say, Popcorn? What should I try and do? Oh, I need to stay calm, keep breathing, OK, and oh, think positive. Yeah, I can do that. I can remember it. Yeah, OK. OK, bye, Popcorn. Bye. She puts down the phone. Tallulah feels ready. She's as ready as she'll ever be. And there above her is Boobo Boobo, the eagle owl, standing up. Take one leg across the other and bend your knee, arms out wide, and scissor them. Wave with your underneath arm and swizzle it round, sitting down like an eagle. Boobo Boobo looks down at all of the owlets below her. She is poised and balanced. Swapping your legs round now, cross the other leg over and bend your knees. Scissor your arms, wave with your underneath arm and twizzle them round. Your wisdom test will now begin. All of a sudden, a snake slithers amongst the owlets. Coming down onto your bellies, hands underneath your shoulders, wiggle your shoulders. All of the little baby owlets start twit-twooing and fretting, coming to your knees. They're getting panicked, and by them getting panicked, it's making the snake panic more too. Coming back down to your belly. <laughs> Tallulah uses her new skills. She listens. She watches and she thinks, what is the snake thinking? And she stops. She becomes as calm as she can. She breathes slowly. As she does this, all of the other owlets see and think, oh, she looks quite powerful and strong. Maybe we should try that. And they all become still. They all become calm. And because of this, the snake becomes calm, coming down onto your bellies. And smilingly, the snake slithers away. Boobo Boobo glides down, 
to see Tallulah, arms wide, fold forward. Silently she lands in front of Tallulah, the owlet. She wraps her up in her ginormous eagle owl wings and says, Thanks to you, Tallulah, all of the owlets have passed their wisdom test. You paid attention. That is all. Your journey to becoming wise has begun. All of the owlets are delighted and twit to woo in celebration. Twit to woo! Twit to woo! Twit to woo! But we. We can't stop yawning. We've got to leave these little night owls to their celebration and to their night school. So we crawl into our tent, coming onto all fours. We crawl inside and get ourselves nice and comfy. We lie down on our backs, resting ourselves all the way back, preparing for some lovely rest. We start by doing a special relaxation game with ourselves where we make our whole body go really, really, really stiff and then we let it go. We make our body go really, 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 really stiff, scrunching our nose and our face and let it go. And then we melt. We breathe slowly. And we let all of that action just wash away. Now, can we be brave? Be brave enough to be still. I think we can be brave enough to be still. What will we hear when we are still? How can we activate our spider senses and listen? When we listen, we take in so much. And when we breathe, we give ourselves space. We breathe now, enjoying this stillness soaking up the wisdom we've learnt. And then it's time for us to awake again, slowly wiggling our fingers and our toes, drawing our knees up and into our chest to give them a hug. We roll over onto our side, and we slowly come up to sit with our legs crossed and our hands together at our hearts. All of that wisdom, that thinking and feeling from someone else's point of view, we can do that. And after three, we say our secret yoga code word, which is namaste. Ready? One, two, three. Namaste. Well done, everyone. That was wonderful. I hope you learned a little bit about wisdom. I did. It was great having you along. I hope to see you soon for another Cosmic Kids adventure. Bye bye. That was wonderful. Well done, you. Now we have a special Zen Den, which is called the Owl and the Guard Dog, which helps you understand how your minds work. I hope you find this very, very useful. Welcome to the Cosmic Kids Zen Den. This is where we spend a little time looking at our minds so we can be healthy and happy in our lives. First, let's get comfy. Sitting on our bottoms with our legs crossed, bring your hands to your knees and take a big deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. <sighs> Lovely. Now, let's get the Zen Den ready so we can really enjoy it. Let's get some sounds going. Ooh, yes. 
Look at all these lovely sounds. Lots of brilliant ones to choose from. Let's pick a couple that help us feel all lovely and relaxed. Look, a piano tune. Let's have that. Oh, and a soft singing bowl. That's a lovely mix. Now for a smell. Oh, wow. Look at these. What a fun set of things. Coffee smell. Ooh, wow. French fries. Mmm, that'll make us hungry. Ah, yes. Let's go for the lemon. That gives us a boost of energy and really wakes us up. Today, we're going to talk about the owl and the guard dog. A really interesting way of understanding our brains. But first, I'm going to share a story about something that happened to me when I was 11 years old. At school, I was put into the top set for maths. I was very excited because it meant I would be with my friends. I also felt a bit proud that my teachers thought I was clever enough to be in set one. The hardest thing for me in those maths classes was when Mrs Barfield, my teacher, used to write a problem or an equation up on the board. She would just put it up there and then give us a few minutes to work on it. No explanation or anything. For some reason, whenever she did this, my brain would freeze. I would get into a panic and huff and puff at being made to do it. And I'd even blame Mrs Barfield for being a bad teacher because I found it so difficult. I once even asked to go to the bathroom just so I could get out of there. I got so uptight that I certainly wasn't able to work out the maths problem. Have you ever had this? Where something happens that makes you sort of freeze, so you can't even think straight? Well, don't worry. It's quite normal. And it's because of how your brain works. You see, our brain is really clever. But above all, it's trying to protect us. It's always on guard in case anything happens that might be dangerous so that it can help us stay safe. There's a special part of the brain which sniffs everything out that we're sensing to decide whether it's okay or if it's a serious threat. It's called the amygdala, or as I like to call it in your brain, your guard dog. If your guard dog notices something and thinks, hold on a minute, this is scary and dangerous and I don't like it, it'll get your body ready so that you can protect yourself. It gets you ready to fight or it tells you to run away or it makes you freeze. Now, our guard dog doesn't always get it right. It can get carried away, which is what happened in my maths class. The problem Mrs Barfield wrote on the board wasn't really life-threatening, but my guard dog decided it was, so I froze. I wanted to fight. I even wanted to leave. I felt stupid and embarrassed that I was in a class where I couldn't understand. So the guard dog in my brain started barking loudly and running around protecting me. This makes it impossible for the part of my brain which can solve maths problems to get involved. This part is called the prefrontal cortex, right up here at the front. Or as I like to call it, your owl. Owls are wise, you see. They're thoughtful and good at thinking about things. Had I been able to calm my guard dog down, my owl might have had a chance at solving that maths problem. Or if it couldn't solve it, it would have shown me how to ask Mrs Barfield for some help. Instead, my guard dog had taken over and was making me panic, so my poor owl didn't get a look in. Maybe you can think of a time when your guard dog caused you to react in a way that didn't really help you. A time when your clever, wise owl didn't get the chance to help you out. Your guard dog was too busy trying to protect you even though you didn't really need it to. So you were fighting or freezing or running away. So what can you do about that jumpy guard dog? What would a Zen Den master do to get it all under control? Well, 
here's something you can try the next time you feel your guard dog taking over. First, see if you can just notice him starting to get upset. Do you feel yourself want to run away? Do you feel the urge to start arguing or fighting? Or do you feel like you're frozen to the spot and you don't know what to do? These are the warning signs of it taking over. It happens to all of us. Actually, it's trying to keep us safe. The key is what do you do now? The best tool I know is called the Magic 10. With the Magic 10, you count from 10 down to 1, giving your brain some magic time to be calm and process what's going on before you say or do anything. Even if you've started to fight already, rather than carrying on, step back and take a magic 10. Let's see what this does to our guard dog. Count with me now from 10. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. There. Can you see how he's less worried now? He's happier. And so our lovely owl can get a chance to help us work out what to do. Of course, your guard dog is very important. He is there to save your life. If there is a real threat, like a fire, or you get lost, or you need to rescue someone, your guard dog will make sure that you make things happen until you're safe again. But sometimes he can just cause a great big fuss over nothing that isn't helpful. It's good to know, isn't it? I wish I had known about my guard dog when I was 11 in my maths class. I might have been able to get some help. And maths would have been much more fun for me. And Mrs Barfield. Hopefully understanding your brain in this way will help you know why you react in certain ways. And with the magic 10, you now have a good way of calming your guard dog and making some space for your wise owl to help you think clearly. Well done for listening and learning about your brain here in the Zen Den. You're on your way to becoming a true Cosmic Kids Zen Den master. Bye-bye! You were great. Well done, you. Now we have some yoga poses in the Yoga Pose universe for you to learn. It's great to become a master of these poses because when you come to do the adventures, you'll be amazing. I hope you love it. The Cosmic Kids Yoga Pose Universe. Flying pose. Standing up nice and tall. We lift up one of our legs and find a spot to focus on, trying not to wobble. Now we stretch our leg all the way back out behind us, like we're pressing it against a wall, using our tummy muscles to stay strong. We stretch our arms wide like wings. Now, flying pose is brilliant for practicing your balance, building strength in your whole body and getting really, really focused. Slowly we lower back down and we need to try it on the other side because we'll be wonky if we don't do both sides. Let's try it on that side now, standing nice and tall, finding a focus spot and then getting yourself nice and rooted down. We lift up one of our legs and we try not to wobble as we take our leg all the way back behind us, our arms out wide, using those tummy muscles, stretching long. Wow, look, it's working. We're flying. Oh, afternoon, lovely day. Oh, watch where you're flying. Ah! Flying pose. The Cosmic Kids Yoga Pose Universe.
crab pose. Coming down to sit on our bottoms, feet flat, knees bent and hands behind our bottoms with our fingers pointing towards our bottoms. Now we lift up our hips and we move sideways because that's what crabs do, they move sideways and we're going to do it with a digger digger. Ready? Let's go that way first. Here we go. Digger 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 and the other way. Digger 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 and lowering our hips. Ooh. Well done everyone. Now crab pose is brilliant for building strength in the wrists and arms as well as the core and the legs. Now we're going to do it again and this time we're going to add a kick at the end of our diggers because crabs love playing football. Oh hello look who's here Ooh. it's our football fan we'll do it with him too. Ready? Lifting up your hips. Let's digger, digger, digger with a kick and an oo. Here we go. Digger, 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 digger. Oo! And the other way. Digger, 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 digger. Oo! Yay! Sitting all the way down. Oh. The Cosmic Kids Yoga Pose Universe. Door pose. Coming down onto two knees, we take our leg to the side. We reach our arm up to the sky and rest our other hand on our long leg. Now we lean over to the side to creak open the door. Here we go. Ooh, it's getting pretty chilly out there. Now door or gate pose is very good for stretching our sides, making more space to breathe, stretching our legs, and it's especially good if we're waking up in the morning. I tell you what, it's also really good if you play sports. Yes! Now it's getting rather chilly in here, so let's close this door and do it on the other side. Coming back to two knees, taking your other leg long now, reaching up with your arm, and let's close this door! Eee! Ah, oh, phew, that's better. Now we can have a nice cup of tea to warm up. Oh, thanks. Well done, that was great. Now we have a lovely Peace Out for you. Peace Out is our guided relaxation series and it really helps your brain and your body totally calm and chill out. It's very, very good for you and I hope you feel wonderful afterwards. Peace out. Time out. Hello, Jamie here. Welcome to Peace Out. This is a quick practice you can do anytime to help yourself feel really good. Firstly, wherever you are, whether sitting or lying down, get comfortable. If you are sitting, make your back nice and long. If you are lying down, get settled, so you are happy to be still. Now you're in position, gently close your eyes. Well done. To start, let's look at what's happening right now in your mind. I'll ask you some questions. All you have to do is think your answers. What thoughts can you see in your mind right now? What are you thinking? Remember, thoughts are like bubbles. They pop up and then float away or burst. Look at them, just noticing them. Ah, there's a thought. And another. Next question. What feelings are here for you now? Have a good look at them. Even if they are hard feelings that don't feel very nice. Just look at them, not changing them, 
they are all allowed. Now see if you can notice your body. Imagine you are shining a torch all over the different areas. Having a good look. Is there anywhere in particular that you can spot? Can you notice any tightness or holding? No need to change it. Just look at it. Now you are going to be a Zen ninja and use laser sharp focus. First, feel your breathing. Your tummy lifting and lowering with each breath. Keep your ninja laser on your breathing. Feel it coming in and going out. Each and every breath. See it. Watch it. Follow it. If your brain decides to wander back to those thoughts, spot it, like all Zen ninja warriors do, and come back to your focus, your breathing, in and out, in and out. Well done. You're doing a great job. See if you can imagine that your breath has made a big warm sunshine light up inside you, right in your middle. See if you can make the warmth spread through your whole body, like you are sending the sunshine down your arms to your fingertips, down your legs to your toes, up into your head and around your face, like you are filling yourself up with goodness, now see if you can beam that warmth and sunshine further out. Filling the whole room you are in, the building, street, town and country you are in, the whole world and universe. Like you are making all this sunshine grow, sending so much light and warmth. By making all this goodness, and sharing it like this means everything will be fine. Slowly open your eyes and look around. Here you are, beautiful, brilliant you, ready for whatever's next with a clear mind and a strong heart. Well done for helping yourself come back to being the best you can be. This is Jamie saying peace out.